All right. Hey guys, it's me, Lil Squawker, and today I will be reviewing The Air by Kiar Cass. And The Air is the fourth book in the selection series, and it follows America and Maxon's daughter, Edlane. Edlyn? Edlyn? Did I get that right? I'm gonna call her Edlyn. And they're, woo, they're, children's names are very confusing and I barely couldn't say them. So it follows Edlyn after the country is in despair 20 years later and uh, they are still revolting and having an anarchy, not having an anarchy, but like they're having a riot about the cast that were in, the selection, the air. No, the selection, the elite, the one, and happily ever after, after they got rid of it so that way the country could be at peace. And so Maxon thinks the only way to solve that is to have a selection for their daughter. And they think that's the best idea, and Adelaide is totally against that. And I will be too. And so she has to meet 35 people that were chosen at random, and one of them being Marley and Aspen's son, Kyle. And, oh my god, I mean, I'll talk about it later. Let's talk about the characters. The characters in this book, we obviously have Edlane, who is the daughter of America and Maxon, and you also have their three sons, Air, Haren, Haren? I don't know how to say these names, except for, like, Austin. Um, I'm just gonna call him A. A is the twin brother of Ed Lane, and A already has a relationship going on, and he really wants to get married to Camille, who is the heir to the France throne over there. Then you also have Caden, I think his name is, um, who is around 14. Then you have Austin, who is still, like, an 8-year-old, I think. These are very weird ranges of age that are going on in this book. And obviously you have Max and you have America, you have Marley, you have Lucy, and you, you have a whole bunch of other characters. And then we meet the suitors, and the suitors that really caught my eye are also in my blog post, which I will link down below. And the ones that really stuck out to me were Henry and Eric. I'm including them as one person for a reason. Kyle, obviously, Hale, and I think I included one more, but I do not remember. But let's just talk about that. Let's just talk about the relationships real quick. The relationships in this book were really confusing, but there was really one that stuck out to me, and that was Edelaine and her family. Edelaine is a strong, independent woman who can almost run a country, and she thinks she can, but really, the situation that happens in the book, she actually kind of can't. And you see that a lot more in The Crown once you get started. And I did start reading it last night. And it is good so far. And you see her underestimating herself and closing herself in. And it's really sad. And throughout the book, you see her whole entire character development skyrocket because she opens herself up, up to a few men in this scenario. And... Personally, I feel like the family relationship in this book was better than the ones in the last three books because you did see more of the aspect of a royal relationship versus like the ones you saw in the selection, the elite, and the one, which I will also link down below as well if you can see my reviews. And I feel like this relationship is better than those relationships because you did see... Um, how America is being queen, how Maxon is also being king, and how they are running this country. Because you really didn't see a lot of it, and you kind of saw most of it in the one. But personally, the heir is so far the one that has a family not in it. And it actually does talk a lot about America and Maxon's past, which I also really do like. Because, yeah, you never really saw them, like... Maxon's dad's past because it's not really focused on Maxon at the moment. It's focused on Maxon's selection. And you see the past between the two and how she describes it. And how Maxon describes his father also what caught me off guard because that's the only memory of him that Ameri not America that Edeline can recall, which I also really like. Because she views his grandpa as a strict ruler, and that's all Maxon says. 
Which I was like, okay, I can see where you're coming from because he did do all those things to America while the selection was going on. Whew, that's a lot. Um, just read my blog post. I mean, I could ramble on for days once I do my series wrap up, which will hopefully be soon. Another relationship I do want to talk about, I'm sorry this video is getting pretty lengthy, is Kyle and, um, Edling. Now, Kyle and Edling, Kyle has been living in the palace since his birth, and they, all the men think that, um, just because he was living in the palace that he should know Edeline better, and better yet, why is he even a selection if he is already in the palace? Well, technically, it says that he didn't enter the foreman. I think Marley entered his foreman. I'm not really sure how that played out. Um, but personally, Edeline does open up to Kyle, and Kyle does also open up to Edeline, and did see scenes of both of that happening, which I also loved, because I do shit them, but at the same time, it's really predictable who can also be the next prince in this case, because I really want Henry to be the prince, and I always, and I also want Eric to be at her side, but at the same time, I feel like she's gonna pick Kyle because of what happened in the book, which is totally uncalled for, but that's none of my business. And another relationship I do also want to talk about is Hale and Edlane. Now, you don't really see a much, you don't see a lot of Hale in the book, which I'm also really sad about, because Hale is a freaking realist. Oh my lord, he expresses his feelings on what every guy in the selection of Edeline's selection is thinking of and literally Edeline just started eliminating people one by one. She eliminated a third of the people within probably like three days or a week and that didn't really happen at all through Max's selection and Edeline is trying to weed out because she doesn't really want this, but at the same time, she's doing it for her own good, so that way she can narrow down pretty quickly, but she also has three months to do it, because that's what she promised her father. And, oh my god, it's, he is just something, because personally, I thought it was sweet of him, but then all of a sudden, I started not liking him because of it, and so, eh. The last relationship, I swear to God, I will talk about right now is Henry and Eric and Edlane. Henry is the sweetest person on earth. Oh my God, his poor English, his passion for food. Everybody needs a Henry in their life. Oh my God, I should probably do a boy's crush tag because this is the second time I said everybody needs to insert a boy's name in their life. And oh my God, it's... Ooh, he is so cute, and the fact that Eric is also having a teensy bit crush on Adeline also makes it kind of worse because he is not really in the selection. He's just there for Henry to translate, and Adeline is trying her best to translate the best of her abilities to Henry, and it is so cute. Um, yeah, that's all I can say. Another controversial topic I also do want to talk about is I like Adeline. I don't know what's your guys' problem. Everybody says she's a snotty little attention whore, but I think she is a strong, independent woman. She has her scenarios planned out, whether it's going to be good or it's going to be bad. And I really like it. I think a lot of the characters in a lot of books should be like that because she's kind of like her mother, um, but I don't want to put her in the elite to compare her to. And personally, I think that... Adelaine is a good character, and Kiara Cass did a really well job of explaining her. She's kind of like a Katniss in a way, because she's a strong, independent woman who can make up her own decisions and will not let the media and the public shame her for it, which I also do like, and I don't know if she took inspiration from Katniss to, like, kind of create Adelaine. Okay, right, um, because this video is gonna go to ten minutes. Uh, I gave this book a 4 out of 5 stars for many reasons. That for being a roller coaster of events because you saw so much happening. It will be like, I'm just going to talk to the boys. I'm just going to have a really good time. Sexual assault! Yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> I can't really help it. But it was literally a roller coaster of events. And I personally couldn't keep up with it. Some, t some parts were boring, but then some parts were really interesting. And it just wasn't timed right. So I really can't help it from there. So yeah, four out of five for the air. 
So yeah, that is my review for the air. I will try to finish up the crown probably within this week. I will also be going to Anderson's for their tent sale that they will be having and picking up the book that I will also be reading as an advanced reader copy. And I'm very excited because it was also featured in B-Fest, so... So yeah, I will see you guys next time. Thank you to all my new subscribers who have recently subscribed. I will put a link down to all my social media pages down below, along with the reviews I have done for the selection, the, the elite, and the one. And yeah. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time.